Good morning, and welcome to St. John the Baptist Cathedral Basilica Parish. We welcome all of you present and those joining us through live stream. At this time, would you take a moment to silence your phones? Our presider today is Father Cecil Critch, and our opening hymn can be found in the Catholic Book of Worship, number 582, Praise the One Who Breaks the Darkness. Please stand. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Happy Canada Day weekend, and also our Memorial Day weekend for us in Newfoundland. At the end of Mass today, we will sing both anthems, Newfoundland Anthem and the Old Canada at the end of Mass today, in recognition of this weekend. To prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries today, we ask the Lord to come into our hearts and to forgive us for the times we have failed to be healers for one another, for the times we have failed to be merciful and compassionate to others, we ask the Lord's forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. You came to call sinners. Almighty 
God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus. Mass is from Canada Day, July 1st, tomorrow, three, tomorrow's prayers. Let us pray, eternal God, whose reign extends from sea to sea and whose care endures throughout the ages, hear our prayers for our country, Canada, grant wisdom to those who govern it, and respect for human life and dignity to every citizen, so that justice may flourish and all peoples live in unity and in peace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. God did not make death, and he does not delight in the death of the living, for he created all things so that they might exist. The generative forces of the world are wholesome, and there is no destruction or destructive poison in them. And the dominions of Hades is not on earth, for righteousness is immortal. For God created man for incorruption and made him in the image of his own eternity. But through the devil's envy, death entered into the world, and those who belong to his company experience it. The word of the Lord. The response to our psalm, I will extol you, Lord, for you have raised me up. I will extol you, Lord, for you have raised me. Oh, you Lord. 
comes rejoice over me. O oh Lord, you brought up my soul from Sheol, restored me to life from among those gone down to the pit. I will extol you. second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, now as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you, so we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, Yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you, but it is a question of a fair balance between your present abundance and their need, so that their abundance may be for your need, in order that there may be a fair balance. As it is written, the one who had much did not have too much, and the one who had little did not have too little. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Mark. 
When Jesus had crossed in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered round him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the synagogue leaders named Jairus came, and when he saw Jesus had fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, so that she may be made well and live. So Jesus went with him, and a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. And there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for twelve years. She had suffered, endured much under many physicians, and had spent all that she had. And she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus, and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak, for she said, If I put touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you? How can you say, Who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it, but the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him, and told him the whole truth. Jesus said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While Jesus was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. Jesus allowed no one to follow him. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to him, Why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then Jesus put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and within where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talita come, which means little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk around, for she was twelve years of age. At this they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this, and told them to give her something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord. Each of us has our own unique journey to travel when it comes to our relationship with the Lord Jesus. The way we approach the Lord is unique to each one of us. The Lord Jesus respects our own unique way of relating to him. It is true that our faith journeys will still have a lot in common. We share the same baptismal calling to allow Jesus to live in and through us. However, how we answer that shared calling will be unique to each of us. We each go to the Lord on different paths. Today's Gospel reading features two people a man and a woman, each of whom draw near to the Lord Jesus in their need. The man is given the name Jairus. He was a synagogue official, someone who supervised the running of the Jewish synagogue. He had a certain social standing in the community, but the woman is not given a name. She once had some financial means because she said it said that she spent all of her money on doctors in a failed attempt to be cured of her continuous hemorrhaging of blood. In that culture, her condition would have left her very socially isolated and declared unclean by the Jewish community. She could not have joined the community when they gathered even at the local synagogue. So these two people approached Jesus for healing in different ways. The synagogue official approached Jesus in a very public way, falling down at Jesus' feet, pleading for him, to him on behalf, on behalf of his seriously ill daughter. Now, that was highly unconventional for someone of the social standing of him to be throwing himself at the feet of someone like Jesus, regarded by most at that time as a traveling prophet and a miracle worker. Yet we know that distraught parents will go to any lengths on behalf of their seriously ill children. The woman's approach to Jesus was different, very private. She couldn't bring herself to speak with Jesus face to face. Rather, she had a strong faith in Jesus, so she sneaked up behind him and just wanted just to touch his clothes. Perhaps she said, I am too clean for too unclean for Jesus to be interested in healing me. Whatever reason. However, Jesus did not abide by such social conventions of the culture. He wanted to meet the woman personally face to face and to know that he was just as interesting in her healing as it, he was in the healing of the official's daughter. 
The woman had great faith as well. That is why Jesus, when he sensed power had gone out of him, said, Who touched me? As the disciples remind him, all sorts of people were crowded around him, touching him. How could he know that someone touched him like that? But her great faith, her trusting faith, Jesus felt that. He wanted to meet her and affirm her faith, and when she finally came out into public view, she did he, she did what Jairus had done, fell at his, Jesus' feet and told him the whole story. And Jesus addressed her, what did he say? My daughter, showing her that she, he loved her with the love of God the Father. He then publicly proclaimed the witness of her great faith to everyone present. Jairus, too, had shown great faith in approaching Jesus on behalf of his seriously ill daughter now, of course, he would have to have greater faith because they told him that she had died. But Jesus said, do not be afraid, have faith in me. Now he needed to have this, to have this deep faith in Jesus. So just as the Lord was present to, Jesus, to Jairus and the woman in the crowd, he is present to us in our need as we approach him. We all have wounds and we all are wounded and need healing. And we bring these wounds and these need, this healing need to Jesus. And the Lord is always there to receive us. He wants to relate to us in a very personal way as my daughter or my son. He wants to heal us in body, mind, and spirit. Even when we are faced with the death of a loved one, Jesus assures us he has the power over death and will bring those who turn to him through death into a new and glorious life, a share in his risen life. He emptied himself of his physical life so that we could all come to share in the richness of his divine risen life. So Jesus' mission is also the mission of the church, the people of God, us, and our individual mission today to be healers, to continue his healing work of Jesus in our world. The healing power of Jesus was centered in his willingness to show compassion to others, no matter who. Jesus always showed compassion. Even on the cross, he forgave the repentant thief, and he also forgave his executioners as well. And he invited the faithful to fix that image on their hearts. God is the one who takes you by the hand, lifts you up, one who lets himself be touched by your pain and touches you in order to heal you and give you life again. Pope Francis, reflecting on this particular gospel today, says, despite all the sufferings of this life and even in the face of sin, God does not keep us at a distance. Instead, Pope Francis said, God draws near to let himself be touched and to touch us, and he always raises us from death. Pope Francis invited the faithful to look into the heart of God precisely because he said we need a church and a society that does not exclude anyone, that does not treat anyone as impure, so that everyone with their own story is welcomed and loved without labels or prejudices. That's from this morning's God, uh, sermon of Pope Francis. This weekend, we know we mark a moment of community healing as well for many in Newfoundland and Labrador. We feel that sense of healing on a community level. The repatriation of our unknown soldier back to his home after a hundred years lying known to God, only to God in a grave in France has brought healing to many families of soldiers and sailors who never returned home in World War I and II. Soldiers whom this unknown soldier represents all of them for us. Because we do not know who Sonny was, we do not know his name, we do not know if he was an O'Brien or a Smith, we do not know if he left a wife and children, or if he was just 16 when he enlisted. We do not know if he was a fisherman from St. Anthony, a singer and a storyteller from the Cape Shore, or a logger from the Gander River, or a trapper from the Labrador coast, or a hockey player from St. John's, we don't know. All we know, his life stopped by doing his duty for king and country, bringing an end to his future, the death of his dreams. His sacrifice represents the sacrifice of all those who returned home wounded in body, mind, and spirit, all those who never came home, who gave the ultimate sacrifice of their lives for our freedom and peace. He represents all of them, and may we honor their sacrifice by continuing to pray for peace and healing in our world, so that their brave lives lay down in sacrifice for the principles for which they fought and died may not have been in vain. So today, this weekend, this week, we experience community healing 
that the Lord is healing us and healing the families of those who never came back. They shall grow not old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning we shall remember them. We will remember them. We stand now and profess our faith as we pray the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was he descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let's now turn in prayer to our Heavenly Father, trusting in God's merciful help for us today and always. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and our Archbishop Peter, that they may continue, by the guidance of the Holy Spirit, to shepherd our Church, the people of God, in these challenging times. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our country, Canada, that it may enact laws that protect all human life, and especially the most vulnerable, the unborn, the elderly, the disabled, and the sick. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those preparing for the sacraments of marriage, and for those in formation for the priesthood and religious life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for peace in all areas of conflict in our world, and especially for Ukraine, the Holy Land, Myanmar, Sudan, and Haiti. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that world leaders respond to the needs of the hungry, the homeless, migrants, refugees, and all those who are victims of injustice and war. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. That we may show care and respect for our earth, our common home. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the power of the risen Christ, the Good Shepherd, bring health and hope to the sick and to all wounded in body, mind, and spirit. And we pray for doctors, nurses, and all who care for the sick. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our parishioners and loved ones who have died recently, and for the recently deceased, Sister Betty Quinlan, Gertie McGraw, Irene Baird, and we pray this weekend for all Newfoundlanders and Labradorians who died in conflicts in defense of our peace and freedom and especially for those whose final resting places are known only to God. And we pray for Francesca Tang, Angela Philpot, and John William Thistle, that they may rest in the peace of the risen Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for the prayers in the quiet of your heart, your own intention today. We pray to the Lord. And God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the graces and blessings you give us every day, and we make our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Savior, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Our hymn for the preparation of the gifts, number 363 in the Catholic Book of Worship, healer of our every ill. Peace. 
joy beholding how your grace is still unfolding. Give us all your vision, God of my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the God's of the Church. Let us pray as we present our offerings in your sight, O Lord. Send down your blessings upon this land, Canada, and its people, that our voices may always sound your praise through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through your word and your spirit you called all things into being, that your love might be reflected in the vastness of the universe, in the bounty of land and sea, and in the diversity of people who bear your image. Yet your gifts of nature did not exhaust your goodness, for the fullness of your love was only revealed when you sent your only begotten Son for our salvation and poured out your Holy Spirit to gather us into one as your own. Therefore, with the great company of angels and saints, we sing to him of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, whose You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. And therefore.
For as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, the clergy, and all your people. Remember all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. John the Baptist and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. baptized children of God, we pray today in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom of God, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us, and deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, I said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, the people of God, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And we share that peace of Christ now with one another. With you. With you. God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For the reception of Holy Communion, we ask that people from the side sections receive Holy Communion first. And if you are unable to receive Holy Communion at this time, you may come forward for a blessing. Our communion hymn 6.6 .6 in the celebrated song, One Love Released.
a few announcements from the bulletin today. Uh, we're still continuing our Fill the Crib project to collect items for those, for uh, especially single moms and for those who are um, having difficulty financially when they're pregnant. So we're trying to help with the, the baby items, so please be generous. Our afternoon teas, uh, sponsored by the Basilica Community Builders Group in our parish, starts on July 11th. You can find the details in the in the bulletin, please pick up a bulletin. The parish garden party is July 21st, and it will be um, also turkey tea sold, so please check out that uh, fundraising effort. Uh, this week we have the choirs from around the world, about 40 choirs who are here all around the city. There is a schedule in the back if you'd like to get a schedule of the different concerts. Uh, quite an exciting week for, for choral music in our province. So. Hopefully you will participate and enjoy that. Uh, tomorrow, because of the um, uh, because of the commemoration, uh, uh, um, the ceremonies downtown uh, starting early. We will have mass tomorrow. Our mass will start at 8:30 instead of 9 tomorrow, on July 1st, because of the memorial service downtown. So mass will be tomorrow at 8:30 for those who want an early Mass tomorrow. Um, if you know, look around the Basilica, right down in the middle there, uh, 
uh, Dr. Jean Fitzgerald, who is on our um, Basilica Heritage Foundation. Uh, we have in the middle there um, uh, items re related to uh, Reverend Thomas Nangle. Of course, he was the priest from our archdiocese who uh, was the regimental chaplain who was on the British War Commission, Grave Commission, and did a lot, did most of the work in um, planning the whole um, National War Memorial here, as well as Beaumont Hamill and all the other um, areas where the Caribou Memorials are. So we recognize him. So there are items that belong to him personally there, the picks and the ciborium that he used on the front as a chaplain uh, to the forces, and all the those little items are there. You can have a look at those. And also John has hung from the uh, balcony down there, the Newfoundland Regiment flag as well, which we rarely see these days, but we have, this is the one that used to fly at the top of the Basilica Tower. So um, I'm glad that uh, we have those items here this week. Catholic Christian Outreach uh, is a group here that is in all the, pretty well every university in, in Canada, helping to evangelize young people and to bring them back to the church. And I just have a very short spo uh, speech here by one of the C uh, Catholic Christian Outreach missionaries. I'd like to invite her up forward for a minute, please. Good morning. Thank you, Father, for allowing us to speak today. My name is Tanatsa. And in my language, my name means, we have done good. I am a full-time missionary with Catholic Christian Outreach, also known as CCO. And as a new missionary with CCO, I believe that I am doing good. I'm here today with three other missionaries, Bernadette, who is a team leader at MON, Victoria, who also recently graduated from MON, and Amber, who specializes in working with parishes around the world. Who of you knows a person who attended church growing up, but stopped attending during their post-secondary studies? Who of you is worried about their children or grandchildren losing their faith as they grow into young adults? In Canada, 79% of Catholics will leave the church by the age of 23, 79%. But these aren't just numbers. They are people we know, our friends and family. I'm sure we all know what it's like to watch the people that we care about walk away from the church. While the number of people leaving the church can be discouraging, however, there is so much hope. There is so much hope for our church. Catholic Christian Outreach missionaries have been working at Memorial University since 2015, and I have been here in Newfoundland since 2019. Being involved with them on campus and at the Basilica has changed my life. And now that I've graduated, I've felt the Lord's call to reach out to other students and bring them closer to Jesus, the same way the missionaries at Mon did for me. The work that missionaries on campus do at MON doesn't just bless St. John's, but blesses the whole country. This year, we saw abundant fruit, with two graduates from Memorial University rising up to join in the mission as new missionaries, and I am one of those graduates. God is truly moving in the hearts of young people. In his address at World Youth Day in Toronto in 2002, St. John Paul II says, Dear young people, it is up to you to be the watchmen of the morning, who announce the coming of the Son, who is the risen Christ. This is why CCO exists. We create opportunities for students to encounter Jesus and then build them up into leaders for the renewal of our church and the renewal of our world. I am speaking to you today to invite you to partner with us in reaching to those who have left to come back. As missionaries, we are responsible for finding all of the funds for our salary and missionary expenses. To be able to continue this work, we look for committed monthly donors who believe in the work we are doing. 
CCO is a registered charity and all donations are tax deductible. If you are interested in hearing more about CCO, I invite you to leave your contact information with us as you exit the church or to fill out the contact cards in your pews, if you see them. Um, just as a note, we are not accepting any donations today. We are asking to meet with you to share more about what CCO does. Through CCO's work, young people are finding their faith relevant and life-giving once again. I hope you will consider investing in the future of our church and the future leaders of our society. Please keep us in your prayers as we continue this work of evangelization. I know that through this work, I'm doing good, and I invite you to partner with me. Myself, Bernadette, and Victoria will be at the back of the church after Mass to talk with you and to collect your contact information to connect with you. Thank you so much, and God bless you all. And I personally like to thank the Catholic Christian Outreach missionaries for their work in assisting me in their various missionary ministries in our parish as well as at Memorial University. The great work they're doing. Please support them. Let us stand now and pray. Lord our God, who never cease to renew your people with the bread of life, fill us, we pray, with a strong and selfless love that we may ever seek reconciliation and justice among all cultures, all races, and nations through Christ our Lord. After my blessing, uh, we will have our anthems. May Almighty God bless all of us in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Have a great weekend. Sun rays crown thy pine clad hills and summer spring.